The University of Virginia football team faces unspeakable tragedy as one of their own former players opened fire on a bus during a class trip, killing three current UVA football players, injuring another along with a fifth injured victim not on the team. I'm not even going to mention the name of the shooter because it's victims whose names you should know, not their killer. Lavelle Davis Jr., Deshaun Perry, and Devin Chandler lost their lives. Virginia canceled its final home game against Coastal Carolina, but that is the least of its concerns right now as it tries to unravel what happened that led to these heinous murders. Lawrence Johnson from Locked On Virginia joins me now. And Lawrence, you've had to cover the kind of story no media person ever wants, the kind of tragedy every family fears coming to their doorstep. Help me and our audience understand where the UVA family is at this moment. Well, I can tell you they've always, you know, just like a lot of other fan bases, you know, you know, when it comes to sports, you know, losing or not having a great year, they can be fickle, you know, the crowd can be fickle. And, you know, there was people upset about things, you know, there's a new system coming in and all that. But in times of tragedy, you know, it just galvanized this fan base, you know, and galvanized the supporters, the fans, the, you know, Anyone who is uh, has anything to do with the University of Virginia, it has galvanized everybody, and uh, they're stronger than ever. You know, they're absolutely stronger than ever right now. So it's just it's it's something that you cannot prepare for, something you cannot plan for. So how let's in, if you're on campus, if you're if you're just a human, this is a tough story to deal with. But from a UVA lens, as a football program, how do you move forward? Well, to move forward, you know, there's, you know, there, there's three things that I employ and I think they can, that they can employ as well as far as principles. Whenever you have a uh, tragedy like this, first is to be truthful, you know, come with the truth, come with the facts. Those are the first things that have to happen. Truthful facts, make sure that, you know, you keep all of the trash away from something like this is make sure it's the right thing you're saying, the proper thing to say. Secondly, it is be uh, emotionally authentic. Okay. There's nothing wrong with showing emotion. If you're upset about it. It's okay to say something, you know, how, how you feel at this time. So just be emotionally authentic. Let everybody know it's okay. At the tragedy like this, everybody grieves differently. You know, some people grieve, you know, visibly, some people, you know, grieve internally, sure. but just be emotionally authentic. And the third thing is, you know, you take the steps to healing. So, so that's the thing, you know, that you have to, and that's, and that's the long-term process in all of this, you know, is the, is the healing. You never get over the grieving and the, in, in, in the healing part. You know, you just try to take it at the pace that you can, you know, that, that you can go at. And, and that's the third thing. And that's what I think as a coach, as a leader, you know, everybody's going to be at different paces of, of all these different things that I just talked about. But that last piece is, is, the, is, is the grieving and healing. And um, you want to get to that, uh, get to that stage and, and start the healing as soon as you can. Of course, it's hard to move on when you lose your brothers, uh, you know, in that manner. This was uh, the, the accused shooter was. A, a one semester walk on back in 2018. So it's not like this was someone that was in the program, but this is also um, a person who has a history of, of um, gun arrests. And so mm. are there going to be questions? Do you think about, do you have questions about the program's role in helping to uh, prevent this in some way? I mean, I, I think these are questions that are going to be asked whether they're fair or not. You hit it right on the head, you know, fair or not, they're going to be, they're going to be asked or have to be asked. Somebody's going to have to account for this, uh, for this situation. There, there, there's no going around it. Um, for me, you know, my, my questions are, are, uh, well, you know, like you said, he, he had a gun charge previously. He also had a hit and run, um, charge. So th there's, there's just things in his history that, you know, that has shown up. And there needs to be maybe a better system in place. You know, um, you know, I think he tried to get some guns when he was 18, handguns, and he wasn't able to. And then in 2000, I think 21, 
he when he was able to, he bought two handguns. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm not trying to make any of this political, but, you know, he, he's shown the signs, you know, of, of, of being a person who's troubled and naturally has to have some kind of anger issues. And I don't know, people talk about screening, people talk about different types of controls or whatever, but, you know, it, it's, it's really hard to navigate. And I know the school was in the middle of, uh, he was part of the risk, you know, the assessment, you know, they were, you know, they were trying to figure out who, who this kid was, what was going on with him. Uh, his, his um, roommate, I, uh, I believe had reported that he said he had a gun. So he, he was in the system as far as trying to figure out and they were in the middle of it, but it, you know, stuff like that, it, it, it always takes a while. But they have to figure out a way to expedite that, expedite that, that thing. And I'm pretty sure they will make sure it's expedited. And it's not just that Virginia, you know, things like that um, go on not just in schools, but companies, businesses, other governments. You know, when you're trying to figure out, you know, who's a bad guy and who's a good guy, it, you know, it's not instant, you know. So that's something that I think that they'll they will make sure they they get going and get that uh, process expedited. You know, and, and it's not just getting the, the processes expedited. It, it's finding a way to reach out to. I mean, this is still, a, a, you know, a 20 something year old young man. Were there ways that they could have intervened, could have helped? I think mm -hmm. these are questions that not just the University of Virginia needs to ask, but that schools across the country, companies, as you said, um, in, in a lot of different walks of life. How can we as as fellow people help in these situations to prevent this? Lawrence, I appreciate your time. Anytime, brother. Appreciate you, Peter.